Hey there everyone and welcome back. So this video is going to be a little bit different to usual. This is just going to be a quick tip for Unreal widgets and it doesn't have any other kind of context or tutorials that go along with it. So I may end up putting this into its own playlist and maybe do more of these if they are popular. The reason I'm doing this is just because it's something that I had problems with for a while and I find the widget system quite uh, cumbersome and it was a little bit tedious going through and changing things especially at the end of projects if you're trying to quickly prototype things. And I haven't really seen much on this subject, so I thought I would make something to try and help people. So the idea behind this is I'm going to go into this assuming that you have some blueprinting and widget knowledge. So I already have a widget made called WBP underscore test. This is a very standard widget. It just has three different buttons and a background image. Now also I have a level blueprint in the map that I've already got open. And this is basically just creating the widget that I've already made. It is adding it to the viewport and then it's getting the player controller and setting the input mode to UI and showing the mouse cursor just so that we can interact with this when we press play. So they don't do anything at the moment. And the idea is that this is just going to show you how we can quickly make changes to entire menu systems by creating our own widget components. And the widget components are being things like the, the buttons, the text sliders and things like that. So in the moment you have this pretty hideous looking UI system. So usually, and this is what I used to do as well, is that you would, you've already got your menu system complete, so you can't really go back through, copy and paste things out to change the, the image of them. One by one, you're going to go through the style, you're going to change the, the color to be something not quite so vibrant as this purple blue, and then you're going to change the texture to be something cleaner and smarter, and you're going to do this individually every time for every button, and then for every bit of text. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go back to the blueprints folder and we will create a new blueprint class. Now under the all classes, we can actually find any of the components that you would normally get inside of the widgets. So let's say that we're wanting to change the buttons. So we're going to type button and we can see here that we have the button widget blueprint. So if we select that, I'm just going to call this uh, BP underscore my button and we can double click this to open the new button. So before I make any changes, I'm going to drop this down in a moment so that we can see some live updates. But if we just hit compile to make sure that this has been updated, if we go back to our widget that we created and we'll go to the common drop down, we can actually see that that new blueprint that we've just made is showing up under the commons panel. Now, if that isn't showing for you, you can just type my blueprint or whatever you've just called the new blueprint and you'll find it just here. So that's the first step. And you're probably wondering how this is going to help. So what we're going to do now is we don't want to remake all of this. We don't want to bring all of this in manually. So we will control and select all of the buttons that we already have in the window and make sure that you have the BP my button selected right click on any one of these buttons and press replace with and you want to replace it with the my button okay so that doesn't work quite as I expected we're just gonna to need to do this on an individual basis so go through and do the same thing select the next button and replace that with my button and then do that one last time for the final button so we now have all of the instances of these buttons set to be the button that we've just created so now if I drag this down what I want to do is the first thing I'll address, in fact, I'll change this, is the horrible default gradient texture that we're given. So under the normal style, I'm going to press the drop down. I'm going to go to the view options and I'm going to go to the show engine content. And I'm just going to search for the standard square white texture. So we can see we've got the square white texture and I'm going to apply that to my button class. Now, what you may have just seen in the background is that all of these have updated at the same time. So that is the really handy thing that we're aiming for here is that we can make this change once and for any of the buttons that we've selected to take these properties, this is going to filter down through all of them. So now maybe you wanted a kind of pastel pink color or something or green to offset the, the darker background. And again, as I change the color in the, the button class, this is updating all of the buttons at the same time. So we're getting there really quickly in comparison to what we would have done if we were doing this on a per button basis. And I'm just gonna change this to a gray actually, just a slightly lighter gray, just for the time being. Okay, so the next thing is that for the same reason, the text is quite big and bold and maybe not what we're looking for anymore. And I'm just gonna change the text down here to say quit. So the next thing we're gonna do is we'll go back and we're gonna to go to just blueprints. And again, we can go to the blueprint classes and we want to find text this time. So it's further down the bottom under widgets and we were using just a standard text block. So we'll use that and we'll call this BP underscore my text block. Nice and simple. And really it's the same thing again. We're just going to go back, find the my text block over here. Uh, so it's not showing. That's because we've not gone in to compile this to make sure it's been updated. So we'll just compile and save this. Go back to the widget and we can now see that the my text block is appearing. So I'm just going to right click on the text that we've got and we'll replace that with the 
my text block if we select that. And of course, this is context sensitive, so it will know what you've selected over here, and it will give you the option to replace the component with that, which is exactly what we want to do. And I'll do that for the final one. So this doesn't mean that we need to change the text again for all of these, but again, in my mind, this is going to be faster because what we can do is now come over to the text block and say that we wanted the font to be light rather than bold, and maybe we wanted it to be a little bit bigger because we've just changed the boldness of it. And of course, if you wanted to change the actual font, if you've got any installed, then you can do that here too. And there we go, all of the text has now been updated and has been filtered through. And then what I've gone and done is I've changed the text. So of course, once you have the main property set on the blueprint class you've just created, you can then filter through and you can override any of the certain things that you wanted on a per object basis inside of the widget again. But the main thing is that it gives you that freedom to quickly change everything in one go for the main style that you know is going to be applied to most of the objects within a menu system. And that would apply to the buttons as well. So let's say um, a widget that I've seen recently looked a bit like this. So it had quite a wide top button and an interesting color for the play button to really make the, the play button stand out. So we'll give this a nice kind of brighter orange. And you'll see as I'm doing this that I am in no way a design oriented person. So this may look terrible at the end. Make the text a bit darker because we can't see this on the lighter colors now. A bit darker again. And if I had two screens, I'd put this to the other side and I could see a live update, but that would do. And then these buttons were actually lined up a little bit over here say less than half the width so 240 make this one 240 and then these buttons were again just different colors to stand out a little bit more from each other so i think that one was a blue and i think the other one i saw was a kind of reddish color so nice kind of pastel colors and there we go we now have all of the buttons set up and you can see how quickly that has allowed me to completely change the interface of a menu system whilst keeping some kind of coherent style in there somewhere and the other thing is maybe the, the background doesn't need to cover the whole thing. This looks more like a, a pop-up window, so we can change the size of this. So we have a nice, simple-looking pop-up background, and all of these are going to be intractable. Now, the other thing I wanted to show really quickly is that because we have these as our own blueprints, if we go back to the button blueprint, for instance, this gives us access to an entire event graph and function graph. So if we created a new function, and we'll just call this one test, really liking the word test in this video. When test is called, we're just going to do a print string. But the idea here is that this is going to allow you to start nesting button specific logic inside of that button. So it's going to make the widget graph a lot tidier and easier to navigate through. So if we find the, the button that we've just created, and I seem to have a lot uh, from previous tests I was doing before this recording, and I didn't actually test this 400 times, but so I don't know where these have come from. But what we want to find is the options, the play and the quit button which uh, relate to these that we've got over here. Let's just pick on the play button. So we're gonna drag this in. And when the player presses play, we still have the options for the events down here. So we're gonna press the on clicked for the play button. We're gonna drag off of this because this is giving us a reference to the BP my button class. So this is kind of like already doing the cast for us. So this means we're gonna have access to the functions inside of this. So we're gonna call the test function. And when this button is clicked, we can just run the test function. So this is a little bit simplistic, but of course, if you had some, but this is, as I said, going to be really great for housing more complex logic on buttons where a lot more things are going to be happening. So if we go in and press play now, we can still do the hovering and everything over the buttons. And now every time we press the play button, we get hello being sent up here. So we know that this is being called from the test function. So that's another reason I like doing this is it just gives you that extra location to house some logic inside of the buttons itself. So you can start trying to compartmentalize things and keep things a bit tidier. So I've started doing this a lot for most of my projects. Uh, it does save a lot of reworking things and I've never seen this happen before where we've got loads of buttons in the graph. They've gone away now, so that, that's good. And the other thing is that you can of course go a step further and you can start making some of these edits inside of the C++ classes, uh, which would allow you to change things such as the um, the categories and some of the automatic compilation you can do with it inside of the widget. But for most of the projects that I work on, just doing the blueprint only stuff is more than enough and in itself is a time saver. So hopefully this is useful. As always though, if this has been useful or you've just enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like and share the video around, that really helps. If you'd like to be kept up to date with the future content coming from this playlist or any of the other playlists on this channel, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.